Jersey Map Beginning is a competition that inspires communities to find solutions to their daily problems. With the 50 million rand prize fund, the initiative aims to develop bright ideas from city residents that will benefit the public at large, enrich their lives and create jobs. This is Jersey Map Beginning. In this episode, we speak to City of Johannesburg Regional Directors, we explore the potential of co-ops and speak to Sam Flamini, we discover key insights into entrepreneurship through one of our expert mentors, and we hear from Josie's leading entrepreneurs in the big interview. Dumelang, hello, and welcome to Season 1 of Josie My Beginning. My name is Noro McQuenna, and for the next half hour, we'll take you behind the scenes of the City of Joburg's Community Innovation Fund. If you want to interact with us, you can do so through any one of our social media pages. That is, Josie My Beginning on Facebook, or you can tweet us your thoughts at Josie My Beginning. Last week, we spoke to Jan Kosef and Bongani Mapuse about the Community Innovation Fund, what it does, and how it works. In this episode, you'll hear from the City of Joburg's Regional Directors as they tell us why the CIF is important and what it could mean for the future of both Josie and its communities. They can come up with an innovative idea to address the illegal dumping, especially in the south of the region. We do our best to address it with a number of departments within the city, but it looks like the problem is increasing. We've got these public facilities which we are maintaining as a city, but we do want communities also to assist us because they have to use them and then when they leave, tomorrow when they come back, they must find them improved. We were taps, copper taps. Each and every night they were stolen by people who stay there and they are using those taps. Now, Job and Quarter has assisted us to order plastic type of taps put in there. But they are a threat also because we've got recyclers at the same time. We've got about three informal settlements in the region. I am daily looking for ideas that can, they can look at the services of those informal settlements, as well as organizing those communities also to take care of them putting in, erecting communal toilets, communal water supply. So we need you know, innovative ideas to look at how we can best address that people receive these services, sustain them, and then maintain them. Some of the things that I think that would be impressive that they could come up with um, is, is how to address some of the problems that we have in your affluent areas. We know we do not have the capacity as the city to enforce the bylaws. Hence, the emphasis on us forming partnerships, for instance, with the private security companies and your residence associations that are out there and your CID groups and your private security guards. The question is, how do we design that to address issues of bylaw enforcement? We know that we've, uh, we've got potholes, it's just general things. What mechanisms can we put in place to make sure that if a pothole, for instance, is reported on at this moment, it's fixed in two, in two hours? It's not a solution by an individual, but it should be a solution that actually brings different parties together in finding a solution to a problem. I have no doubt in my mind that we had maximum participation around that. Importantly, where young people were coming forward, giving us ideas, sharing, and we didn't want to influence. I think it's important that people begin to shape their own destiny. People begin to shape what they feel is important for them. So we've engaged with different sectors of society. But I think our focus point, what is crucial, is young people. And we got a lot of ideas coming from young people. 
about how they want to begin to shape the region, how do they see the region. Um, and we, without us dictating things to people, I think that's, that's an important component for what is the whole concept of innovation. Henry Ford, the American industrialist and the founder of the Ford Motor Company once said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, but working together, that is success. The city of Johannesburg and the Community Innovation Fund is surely a clear picture of that. Our website is a great source of help for entrepreneurs. We often share news, articles and useful links to help you succeed. The man behind all our social media is Brandon and here he is with our weekly hints and tips. Hi entrepreneurs. One of the most challenging tasks as an entrepreneur is to establish a unique value proposition. Let's be honest, identifying your own differentiating factors isn't that easy. So I found these tips by Curati. Let's check them out. Firstly, check your W's. Start at the basics and answer these four questions. What does your company sell? Who are your ideal target customers? What pain points does your product or service solve for them? Does it save time? Is it affordable? And what makes your product or service unique compared to your competition? Secondly, involve others. Put yourself in your audience's shoes to see how you can appeal to them more. Surveys, blogs and social media are good for reaching out to your audience. Alternatively, peers and friends are usually happy to help. Also, remember to look at testimonials from existing customers. That should give you enough accurate insight. Thirdly, pay attention to competition. Seeing competition as enemies isn't always the right approach. By observing your competition, you can learn how to serve your clients better. Make a list of your most successful competitors and check their product or service offering. Read their content and look at what their customers are saying about them online. Fourthly, ask for feedback. Turn to your trusted peers and partners to give you constructive, detailed feedback. Based on that, continue working at your message until it feels right. So in summary, check your W's, involve others, pay attention to competition and ask for feedback. That's all from me, now go and make that pitch. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at Jersey My Beginning and on Twitter at Jersey My Beginning. Join the conversation. Until next time, remember, keep focused. Remember to check out our social media pages. That is Josie My Beginning on Facebook or Josie My Beginning on Twitter for all your information about the competition, its finalists, and the expert mentors guiding our entrepreneurs. Co-ops have been praised as having the potential to impact communities and truly transform South Africa. One such co-op, led by Sam Dlamini, is changing the face of Pennyville one piece of litter at a time. This is how Sam's co-op is making an impact and beginning to transform their community. My name is Sam Zamini. I'm a chairman of the Bogani Cleaning Cooperative at Pennyville. We applied in June for a cooperative. In number, we were nine. We are now 12 because we employed three more. And luckily, we went through and uh, we are appointed. So we have started working now. We are cleaning uh, 58 flats and 48 uh, community flats. On a daily basis, what we do is uh, we sweep up or we do the uh, mopping twice a week, which is Tuesdays and Fridays. But uh, otherwise, we do the sweeping, clean up uh, the floors, clean up the paving in order to keep uh, the place uh, clean. 
We even talk to our uh, uh, residents, tell them to keep the place clean in order to live in a, a very, very clean environment. I, I as the, um, the elderly in the group, I'm 73 years of age, and we've got our last uh, born, we call him last born, he's Pindile, he's tw uh, she's 21. Now, we don't even count the age group. You could be of any age you are, you are being considered. What makes me happy about this is that uh, we are teaching our people most of them already are geared on what we are doing by keeping the place clean on a daily basis uh, because we are cleaning from Monday to Friday. It is wonderful what a group of people with a single vision can achieve when working together. Thank you Sam for keeping Pennyville clean and tidy. Mentorship, entrepreneurial news and the big interview. All this and more coming your way on Josie My Beginning. This is Josie My Beginning. The show that takes you behind the scenes of the 50 million rand community innovation fund. Remember, if you want to access our hints and tips, general competition information, or just want to share your thoughts and comments with us, do so via social media pages. That is, Josie Ma Beginning on Facebook or at Josie Ma Beginning on Twitter. We would love to hear from you. This year's Josie Ma Beginning competition, along with all City of Johannesburg competitions, has a strong focus on mentorship. All finalists are assigned mentors who are industry leaders and experts in entrepreneurship to assist them in turning their ideas into reality. In this episode, we hear from human-centered design expert, Vincent Hoffman, as he equips us with the necessary tools to move us forward as entrepreneurs. So the, the really interesting thing about doing what, what we would call experience mapping, um, or what I prefer to call just drawing on some paper, is to really get into the heads of the people that you're trying to serve and all of the relationships that they may have in the real world. So for instance, in my own world, uh, I chose the, the story of me getting into my car in the morning to try and illustrate uh, what my experience was like before the day gets off. Um, and with the reason I did that is to really get people to understand in that process just how many related entities there are. So when I get up in the morning, I don't just think about getting my keys, I think about what the day leads up to. I don't just get into my car, I think about what I'm going to listen to in the, en route. There's so much deeper. And so once they start drawing out the experiences, they start to see all of those relationships and they're able to see the points of leverage for their service or product. Yes. To design is to solve problems in the world and I think all of you are problem solvers. Have you run out of stickies? You can do better than that. Every bit of intellectual property that we have as a business gets given away for free. You will get a Dropbox folder with everything. The minute you uh, make friends with us, you get to learn from you and you get to learn for us as much as we are together. Which is quite cool, I think. And here in this process, what we've done is we've isolated them. Rather than working as a team, we've got everyone working 
uh, as an individual. And the reason why we do this is we see a lot of groupthink in the brainstorms that typically take place as teams. So this is the chance for them to sit quietly and get into their own heads in the, the solution space. And what I like about this process is, is often how profound it is to see how many ideas get generated. Um, and as part of the next step is to really see them as a team then work together on themes, so drawing commonalities. Because what we often see is how many ideas overlap and has, as they overlap how much do they improve. Uh, the last bit of it is also elimination, is to cut out the ideas that maybe are redundant from the start. And uh, the commercial reason for doing this is of course is to cut out the fat. It's not invest in the ideas that are bound to fail from the get-go. Visit our website at www.josiemabeginning.co.za for this mentorship clip and more. He's an educator, author and a serial entrepreneur. In this edition's big interview, Puno speaks to Adam Rabinovitz about what it takes to be successful as an entrepreneur in today's economic climate. Joining me in studio, we have an entrepreneur who's also a creative and an author. He'll be sharing with us his experiences and his knowledge. We welcome Adam Rabinovitz. Welcome, Adam. Thank you. Thanks so much. Please tell me, and in your capacity as an author, what is your book about? Well, this book is called How to Create, Fix, Manage and Grow Your Small Business. Uh, so it's obviously aimed at entrepreneurs who are thinking about starting a small business. It's also for those who have a small business uh, and need some help understanding how to manage it and run it properly. Uh, then there's those who, who have a small business that's in crisis and they need to know how to fix the problems. So it's for those two. Um, and it's also for people who have a, a fairly successful or established business um, that want to know how to expand or, or where to go to from here, how to grow their business properly. Hmm. And when businesses fail, what are the reasons for businesses failing? Well, mostly businesses fail because they exceed the capacity of the person who started them. They outgrow the capability of the founder. Uh, what most people don't realize is that you really need to play three roles when you start a business. The founder or the entrepreneur, as well as the manager uh, and the, the innovator, the creator. Most people spend time in one space but not the other two. Uh, and so businesses really fail when the founder uh, discovers that the business is now getting too busy but they lack the management capabilities to run a business properly. And what can a newcomer then do? Who wants to play all three roles? What can <laughs> they do to avoid the failing? Well, the, the, the simple answer uh, is to recognize which is your natural behavior. So some people are technicians or people that have a technical skill and they're very good at doing something but they're not very good at running a business that does the thing that they're good at. Uh, so for example, if you're a great engineer or an accountant or even a writer, uh, that's your technical skill. Be good at that, but learn management skills in order to know how to run the business that then produces that product. Uh, and that's where I find most people are lacking. When I do um, courses for, for senior managers in big companies, the same sort of discipline applies. A lot of people are promoted to managers because they're good at, man uh, because they're good at their technical work, but not necessarily because they're great managers. So the same thing happens in corporate and the same thing happens in the entrepreneurial world. Sure. People need to learn to manage. Hmm. And now we always like to give information about how not to fail, what to do to prevent failure. But failure happens. So what happens to an entrepreneur who has failed? What should they do now? So I think the, the first thing that an entrepreneur should do uh, when they encounter failure is to recognize that you're not alone. Hmm. Uh, if you look at the statistics, 96% of all small businesses fail in the first five years. That means if you put 100 small businesses in a row, four of them will still be around in five years' time. 96% of them will have failed. So failure is not unusual. Failure is not abnormal, and failure, failure certainly should not be uh, reprimanded, or you shouldn't feel a sense of inadequacy. Um, recognize that it's not the person who failed, but the idea or the business. Uh, and then give yourself a day to cry, then get back on your feet. Um, if you are experiencing failure, um, make the hard decision about whether or not you really should continue or whether it's worth closing the door and exploring either a safer chapter, in other words going to find employment uh, or, or investigating a new uh, more sustainable business venture. Sometimes the idea should never have worked mm -hmm. and so you take what, what, what could have been a great idea and you put it out in the marketplace but nobody wants to buy it mm -hmm. simply because you might have thought it was great but it doesn't work for anybody else. Um, the other reason for failure is that you might have tried something but not managed it well in which case your competitors just did a better job than you um, and, and you, you simply got outdone. 
So you may need to go back to the drawing board and decide is it worth refining or fixing that product and trying again? Or you know, is the competition too strong? Should we go and try something else? There are definitely tools and models uh, that, that people can learn from textbooks, from, from, from business writers, that will help you solidify that idea before you put it out there in the marketplace. And once you put it out there in the marketplace, you've usually spent lots of time and money. The idea is to do all of that research before you spend the time and the money, then put it out there. Sure. And you mentioned managers just before. Um, <coughs> what, what, what do managers have to do? What is their key to success? <laughs> so the, a great manager understands what work needs to be done in order to maintain or to get that product consistently out into the hands of your customers. You're looking for three things providing consistency, reliability, predictability. If you look at all the successful brands or the ones that you love dealing with, you're getting those three things from them. You know what you're getting, so that's predictable. You get the same thing every time, so it's consistent. And you know that the product is reliable, so if you need it and you, you, you want to um, get it at a certain time, you know you can rely on the promise that the company who's giving it to you is offering. And that's what you need to provide as a manager. And that all boils down to understanding how the product works or how you, your, your manufacturing or delivery process works and organizing the systems and the people that drive the, the, the creation or the delivery of that product to your customers. Sure, thank you. And just to end off the session, we know that growth and success is very relative to context and different types of businesses, but in 2016, when a business says it's, it's growing or it's successful, what do you think that means? I think it depends very much on the definition of success to each individual founder or business owner. To me, success is having a business that supports and maintains my lifestyle. To the guy next door, it's having four Ferraris and, and having your R8 on order. So the most important question you have to ask yourself is what does success mean to you and are you happy with that? You can never measure your success against somebody else's. So if you want to be the next Bill Gates or the next Mark Zuckerberg, good luck to you, but it's a very ambitious yardstick for success. Success must mean what you want it to mean to you. Uh, and you shouldn't waver then or, or be embarrassed to say, this is what I consider successful. Mm -hmm. That's what I think our, our generation of 2016 um, should, should take to heart because success, we have the, these um, unrealistic expectations of success simply because of these huge icons or these billionaires that have uh, arisen overnight and we want to be like them. Yeah. Um, not everybody should adopt that. You need to look inside and understand your own soul mm -hmm. to decide what your measure of success is. And who's your entrepreneur role model then, just to link on to that previous question? <laughs> I, I like the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. Um, I, 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 I love people who've come up with these incredibly successful ideas like Uber, like um, uh, Take A Lot, um, like, like Facebook. Um, ideas that really just hit the mark. Ideas that, that manage to, to find the right market, to hit the right note with the right market, and then really succeed because people talk about them and, and, and the idea itself is worth becoming successful. I don't like successes where, where, where people have had to hammer people to buy their idea and three years later the idea is nowhere to be found. Sure. Thank you so much. You've shared so much knowledge with us and I'm sure any startup, any failed or failing business is definitely going to be able to get back on their feet just based on what you've said. Super. Thank you so much for being on the show. Sure. Well, that's all from me and from Adam right here on The Big Interview. Joe's is known as the business capital of South Africa, so it is expected that it will be buzzing with entrepreneurs and innovative startups. Here at Joe's My Beginning, we like to keep you up to date with what's happening in the city. Next up, with the city's latest news, is our own Puno Silesio. Making headlines this week, Standard Bank Incubator launches Igniter program, Hack Josie announces winner. Schwab Social Entrepreneur of the Year announced. Hello, I'm Bono with this week's Josie My Beginning News. The Standard Bank Incubator has launched its Igniter Startup Initiative. This three-month program aims to train entrepreneurs in the lean startup model and help build their respective enterprises. The program has a strong mentorship focus and all 17 enterprises are evaluated bi-weekly. Successful enterprises will benefit from the incubator's support. 
Staying in the city, the Hack Josie competition has finally come to a conclusion. The initiative, which promotes digitally based solutions for the city's communities, was won by Nao Hutiri, the founder of Technovera, a tech company which makes smart lockers used as dispensers for chronic medication. The winner took home 1 million rand, while second and third place startups, Tutami and eSubmit, both took home 350,000 rand respectively. And in our last story, the 12 Schwab Social Entrepreneur of the Year winners were announced. Amongst the winners were two South Africans, Levuyo Rani, founder of Silulo Uluto, Internet Cafe, and Tracy Gilmore, the COO of The Clothing Bank. These businesses have both had a significant impact in their respective communities. Congratulations. That's the news for this week. Remember to keep in touch with us through our social media pages or email us your news on info at josiemybeginning.co.za. From the news team, goodbye. Next week, you don't want to miss the show as our journey with the competition finalists continues. We also get updates on all things Josie My Beginning, hear from our mentors, and we catch up with leading entrepreneurs in our big interview. Don't forget to connect with us through our social media. We would love to hear your thoughts about entrepreneurship and the latest updates from your communities. That's all from the Josie My Beginning team and me, Nolo McQuenna. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.